In this video, I am going to discuss about limiting factor analysis. Limiting factor analysis is a management accounting technique that helps businesses to identify and manage their scarce resources. A limiting factor is a resource that is in short supply relative to demand and constrains the production or distribution of goods and services. Common examples of limiting factors include labor, raw materials, equipment, machinery and warehouse space. A business can take steps to optimize its use of the scarce resource and improve its profitability. Simply, this is a factor that is limiting the production or distribution of goods and services. Why do we do this analysis? It is to identify any limiting factors within the organization and how to manage this limiting factor in order to improve the profitability. Ultimately, we identify the product mix that will maximize the profitability. Limiting factor can be any factor within the organization. There are three instances when it comes to limiting factor. If the business has one product, they can use the limiting resource to produce goods to meet the demand. Let's say there is a bakery. The limiting factor can be the supply of flour. But if the bakery is only producing bread, they can use all the flour to make bread. If the business has more than one product, this is called the product mix. The term product mix is used when there are more than one product. They have to prioritize the products that will maximize the profit. Now let's say the bakery is making bread as well as they are baking cakes. Now there are two products which means there is a product mix. If the limiting resource is flour, they have to prioritize the product that will maximize the profit. This is the instance we are going to discuss under this topic. If the business is in contract to supply goods, this will be given priority. Let's say the bakery has a contract to supply 100 cakes to a nearby cafe every week. No matter what the condition is, the bakery has to fulfill this supply. If the limiting resource is flour, they have to give the priority to bake cakes for the cafe. After fulfilling this contract, they can give the priority to other products. Now let's discuss about what are the steps of limiting factor analysis. First, we have to identify the limiting factor. What we do here is, we are identifying whether there is a limiting factor or not. Maybe there is no limiting factor. If there is a limiting factor, we have to identify what is the limiting factor. If there is a limiting factor, then we have to calculate the return or contribution per limiting factor. This is very important. Most of the students will get incorrect answers for limiting factor analysis because they do not follow this step correctly. We have to calculate the return or contribution per limiting factor. Once we do an example question, you will understand this. Then we have to rank the products with highest return to the lowest. Then calculate the number of units of each product we can produce beginning from the highest return product until all the limiting resource is utilized. If the question is asking the maximum return, we have to calculate the optimal product needs. As the final step, we have to calculate the maximum return that will be obtained under optimal product mix. Now let's do an example question. So you will understand each of these steps. Company X has a product mix of A, B, C. This is a product mix. Which means there are more than one product they are producing. All these products use a common raw material which is Z. The availability of Z for a month is 120 kilograms. 
this is a raw material which means the availability of raw material is set for a month is 120 kilograms we don't know yet this is a limiting factor or not we have to calculate and see whether is it is a limiting factor or not monthly demand for product a b c is 30 12 25 respectively the usage of material set per unit is 3 kilograms 1 kilograms and 1.2 kilograms contribution per unit is two dollars two dollars four dollars respectively what is the profit maximizing product mix what is the optimal contribution let's go back look at the step one identify the limiting factor as the first step what we have to do is we have to calculate the total need of raw material to produce product a product b and product c in order to meet the demand we know the availability of raw material set is 120 kilograms now let's calculate the need of raw material z so for product a the demand is 30 which means the market is demanding 30 units of product a for a month multiplied by how many kilograms of raw material z is needed to produce one single unit of product a which is 3 kilograms so the company needs 90 kilograms of raw material set in order to meet the demand for product a in order to meet the demand for product b the company needs 12 multiplied by 1 kilogram which means the demand for product b is 12 and one single unit of product b is using one kilogram of raw material set this is equal to 12 kilograms for product c the demand is 25 multiplied by 1.2 kilograms this is equal to 30 kilograms now we can calculate what is the total need of material set to produce product A, B and C in order to meet the demand which is the summation of this amount which is 132 kilograms. The availability of material set is 120 but we need 132 kilograms in order to meet the demand which means now the raw material z is a limiting resource because we need 132 but the availability is 120 now we have identified that there is a limiting factor which is raw material set let's go back to the steps now we have to calculate the return or contribution per limiting factor pay very close attention to this step this is really important so this step 2 is to calculate the contribution or return per limiting factor this is where the most students will get confused they will simply take this contribution per unit value in order to make the decision so the highest contribution per unit is four dollars so they will select this product to give the priority but this is incorrect we have to calculate the contribution per limiting factor this is how we do this so for product a the contribution per unit is two dollars what we have to do is we have to calculate the contribution per limiting factor so we have to divide this value by how much limiting resource is product a is using product a is using three kilograms of raw material set this gives us the contribution per limiting factor 0 0.67 
per limiting factor limiting factor this is really important this is what we have to calculate for each product now let's calculate for product b for product b the contribution per unit is two dollars divided by one kilogram this is because one unit of product b is using one kilogram of raw material set raw material set is the limiting factor or the limiting resource this is equal to two dollars per limiting factor for product c the contribution is four dollars divided by 1.2 kilograms this is equal to 3.33 per limiting factor when it comes to limiting factor analysis we have to calculate the contribution per limiting factor it is easy to remember always remember when it comes to limiting factor use the contribution per limiting factor so the second step is done let's go back the third step rank the product with highest return to the lowest so the highest return product is product c because this is the highest contribution per limiting factor so this is the number one we give the number one priority to product c then we select the product b because this is the second highest contribution per limiting factor which is two dollars so this is the second highest so the product a will be the third highest now the third step is done let's go back the fourth step calculate the number of units of each product we can produce beginning from the highest return product until all the limiting resource is utilized we just completed this part of the question what is the profit maximizing product mix this is the profit maximizing product mix product c product b and product a product c has the highest contribution per limiting factor product b has the second highest contribution per limiting factor product a has the least contribution per limiting factor this will be the profit maximizing product mix in order now let's go to the step number three which is to calculate the number of products we can produce using the ranks we have given now what we do is we give the priority to product c because product c will be given the priority so the demand for product c is 25 we need 1.2 kilograms in order to meet the demand because this is the demand for product c this is the limiting resource which needs to produce one product of product c this is equal to 30 kilograms so how much material is it is left when we produce product C, we had 120 kilograms. We used 30 kilograms to produce product C. Now we have 90 kilograms left. Now let's give the priority to the second highest contribution per limiting factor product, which is product B. The demand for product B is 12. To produce one unit of product B, we need one kilogram of material set. So, this will take 12 kilograms of material set in total. So, how much material set will be left after we produce product B? We had 90 kilograms, which is this value after producing product A. Now, we are going to use 12 kilograms from this 90 78 kilograms now let's go to the final product which is product a product a has a demand of 30 units and each unit uses 3 kilograms so we need 90 kilograms of material set in order to meet the demand for product a 
but look at the outstanding balance. We only have 78 kilograms, but in order to meet the demand, we need 90 kilograms. This happens because the material set is a limiting resource. Now we know we cannot meet this demand because we only have 78 kilograms of material set. So what we are going to do is we are going to calculate the number of units we can produce with 78 kilograms. This will be a reverse calculation. So we cannot consider this calculation because we do not have 90 kilograms. Now let's reverse calculate this amount. So we have 78 kilograms with us. We know that product A uses 3 kilograms per product. Now what we have to calculate is we have to calculate the amount of product A. Let's denote this as A. So A is equal to 78 kilograms divided by 3 kilograms. This is equal to 26. This means we can only produce 26 units of product A. The demand for product is 30, but we can only produce 26 units. So finally, these are the number of units we can produce using this limiting resource. Product C, we can produce 25. Product B, we can produce 12. Product A, we can produce 26 units. This is the profit maximizing product mix in the form of number of units. Now let's go back. The final step, calculate the maximum return that will be obtained under optimal product mix. This is also called the optimal product mix. Now let's calculate what will be the total contribution when we produce this optimal product mix. So we are going to produce 25 units of product C. For product C, the contribution per unit is $4. Plus the contribution when we produce product P is 12 multiplied by $2 and the contribution we are going to make when we produce product A is 26 multiplied by $2. So this is equal to $176. This is the maximum contribution we can obtain under the optimal product mix. Please read through these steps very carefully and follow these steps one by one when you are doing the limiting factor analysis questions. Always calculate the contribution per limiting factor in order to rank the product. Do not consider the contribution per unit as it is. Now let's do this example. If availability of material X is 300 kilograms, what is the order of? optimal product mix starting from the first priority. They have given the data for product A, product B and product C. What we have to do first is we have to identify whether there is a limiting resource or a limiting factor. As they have given the material X, let's assume this will be the limiting factor. So now let's calculate the what is the total need of material X in order to meet the demand for product A, product B and product C. That way we can identify whether material X is a limiting resource or not. So how we can calculate the total need for each product? They have given the material X usage per unit in kilograms and they have given the demand for each product. Multiplying these two values will give us the total need of material X for each product. For product A, 2 multiplied by 50 is 100 kilograms, which means we need 100 kilograms in order to meet the demand for product A. For product B, 4 multiplied by 40 is equal to 160 kilograms. For product C, 2.5 multiplied by 40 is equal to 100 kilograms. 
Now let's calculate the total need of material X for product A, B and C. This is equal to 360 kilograms. So do we have 360 kilograms of material X? No, we don't. We only have 300 kilograms, but we need 360 kilograms. This means material X is a limiting resource. So the first step is done. Now we have to calculate the contribution per limiting factor. As you can see, they haven't given the contribution per each product separately. They have given the selling price and costs for each product. So now we have to do is we have to calculate the contribution per each product separately first. Then we have to calculate the contribution per limiting factor. So what is the formula to calculate the contribution? Contribution equals to selling price minus marginal costs. They have given the selling price here and they have given few costs. Let's see all these costs are relevant to the calculation or no, not. We only need marginal costs. Material X cost per unit. This is relevant. Labor cost per unit. This is also relevant. Variable cost per unit. This is also relevant. Fixed cost per unit. This is not relevant because this is not a direct cost. All these three costs are direct costs. We will consider those under marginal costs. But we do not need the fixed costs because this is not a direct cost. So this is not relevant to the calculation. Now let's calculate the contribution per each product separately. For product A, the contribution is 12 minus 4, 1.5. This is equal to 4.5. This is the contribution per unit of product A. For product B, selling price is 10, 1, 2, 3. This is equal to $4. For product C, selling price is 6, 0 0.5, 1, 1, 3.5. We just calculated the contribution per unit for each product. Now let's calculate the contribution per limiting factor. So they have given the material X usage per unit in kilograms. This is the limiting factor for each product. So simply we can divide the contribution per each unit by the material X usage per unit. So 4.5 divided by 2, 4 divided by 4, 3.5 divided by 2.5. This will give us the contribution per limiting factor for each product. So product A contribution per limiting factor is equal to 2.25 per limiting factor for product B $1 per limiting factor for product C $1.4 per limiting factor now what we have to do is we have to rank these contributions so the highest contribution per limiting factor is product A. The next highest is product C. And the third highest is product B. So the order of the optimal product mix starting from the first priority is product A, product C, product B. This is the answer. I hope now you understand what is the concept of limiting factor analysis. We use this analysis in order to identify the limiting factors, then to calculate the profit maximizing product mix. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.